a lot of uh, familiar faces and uh, a lot of uh, new faces as well. Um, I was uh, invited to this session to uh, do a small introduction in the EBCU and what's uh, what is the EBCU thing. Hopefully, a lot of you guys uh, know what it is, but if there is one or two out there who's not knowing it, I'll uh, just do a small explanation. I'll be here for the uh, for the event with a little eye to the Arsenal game on the other screen, but that's another one. Uh, <clears throat> First, start with the uh, European Beer Consumers Union. We all call of ourselves the voice of the European beer consumer. It's a federation umbrella organization, you can call it, uh, currently consisting uh, eight, 18 national beer consumer organizations across Europe. We were founded in uh, 1990 um, in Bruges. So we actually turned 30 last year, <laughs> but uh, we uh, had to postpone our anniversary as well as many other organizations. So uh, keep, we keep uh, doing that. But actually we represent around 220,000 um, official member of consumer organizations uh, all over Europe. Uh, <clears throat> the consumer organization is a lot of difference uh, during the countries, but uh, we have a lot of things in common. Uh, we launched an article on our Facebook today uh, with some of the keystones from camera who actually turned 50 uh, two days ago. And uh, actually they explain a lot about what's, uh, what's in it to be a beer consumer organization. We uh, have done a small manifesto. You can uh, find it on our uh, webpage as well. Small, but efficient as we see, and uh, it will pin out our three key points we're doing. Wherever we ask to do uh, a speech or whatever, we will uh, talk about it on the consumers uh, organization. First of all, our, fir our first point is the diversity of beer. Um, we are working for a rich choice of beer from different breweries. Consumers have the right to choice and should be able to select from at least two beer manufacturers produced and probably more in any shop and bar selling in uh, particular. The market needs to be accessible for products in small local breweries. I know the uh, last year has been a little uh, tried on, on doing that, but we see that the market is changing a little. It's changing to a more local, uh, support your local brewery, but still upcoming the uh, and support the variety of, uh, of beer. Also the rich choice of styles uh, and all that kind of things. We also on our webpage have a, a good uh, writing about uh, the beer styles all over Europe. Also our point number two is to um, information about beer. Um, it has upcoming the last few years about the ingredients. Beer has always been a very keen to ingredients because you can't do a good beer with bad ingredients. So the consumer has always been very keen to see what's in my beer, but the information level on the bottle from the brewery, all that kind of has not always been so good. Also uh, things about the manufacturer and uh, where the beer actually is uh, done and all that kind of thing. So we also work on information about beer and the information level from uh, EU uh, commission level to several countries is always uh, into a fight <laughs> about that. The minimum uh, information level, we think it's too low on, uh, on European level. And of course our third point is the uh, cost of beer. We accept, uh, of course, the beer prices, but the consumer have the right to get the beer uh, without all the taxation and uh, the, the reason, uh, reasonable prices, of course. And uh, there's a lot of taxation going around in different countries. I know we have uh, people from Finland and Sweden uh, with us today, and they can <laughs> tell Horrible stories about that. Also, Ireland is one of the hardest taxation in all over Europe. And of course, we we work for 
and doing campaign for um, reasonable prices on uh, the beer. Um, that's actually our three key points. Uh, and about for that, we are umbrella organization and doing a lot of networking on EU level or European level, I uh, say. Um, so we are very, uh, very keen to, to tell about these things. And also we can see during this uh, pandemic times, uh, people is talking more and more about the socialing, the socializing of, of drinking a beer together. Uh, and, and of course, that's also one of our points that you can, you can do a lot when you meet, have a beer and do a chat with your friends as well. Uh, our organization is organized by me by chairman and we have a small um, executive of five people. Uh, nowadays, it's uh, one guy from Finland, one from the uh, UK, one from Spain, uh, myself and a guy from Italy. So we are also a European project that way. In these years, we're also celebrating a lot of anniversaries during uh, the Beer Consumers Union. And I know that uh, actually last year, also uh, Pint in uh, Holland, Netherlands, has uh, turned 30 or something like that. And uh, so we have a lot of celebrating and we can see the consumer organization all over Europe is actually very old and uh, good funded. But, uh, I'm not doing the talking about it. So um, into this EBCU stuff, maybe we'll put a little on to this seminars later on because we have started these seminars in or among the people who is around EBCU executives. And a big great thanks to uh, Brett and uh, Marcus and Alex who uh, virtually worked with this one. And uh, I see, see looking forward to see a lot of other stuff education interesting or whatever so uh, please knock yourself out it's uh, not for me from now marcus thank you bo um i'm gonna hand over to marcus now the only thing i would say is just a little bit of administration if you want to use the chat window to ask any questions and i will put a link to the evaluation which i can ask you to complete at the end but over to uh, to you marcus okay Hello, so thank you very much for the introduction, Bo, and um, also Brett for the organization. And um, yeah, we will talk tonight a little bit about, about the um, possibilities and, and things we have with online tasting and online events and also with online judging. So you will have also Anita with us. Um, she is the um, awards director of the World Beer Awards, and she will talk after me about um, the World Beer Watch, which were the first major competition, which was done completely online in the last year. Yeah, so today, um, let's start. Um, for me, um, I'm Markus from Germany. I'm the president of the German Beer Consumers Union, GBCU, which is now founded, I think, three years ago. We started, and um, we are the new German beer consumers organization. And we wanted to have a big meeting last year with all the European people here. In Germany, which was not possible, and we try to do it this year. It's not possible again, so maybe next year. So I'm also a beer writer, um, international beer judge in all the big competitions like um, World Beer Cups, World Beer Awards, or the European Beer Star and others. So I'm beer sommelier, cheese sommelier, and spirit sommelier, and also I founded the German Beer Academy. And that's a little bit the background because we had the problem last year with a lockdown initiation from one day to the other our schedule was totally empty all the, the the courses and things were not possible anymore and so we had to turn into the online thing and that was the challenge we had and that's also a little bit what we are talking about today so what are we gonna do um first thing we already had is the introduction by Bo. so thanks again um then we will talk about the online beer events and afterwards about the online moderation, some tips and things about that, which has been done by me. And then we will be talking about the online competitions done by Anita. Yeah, and afterwards we have the Q&A section and maybe a little conclusion. Yeah, so um, feel free to ask questions. So um, the easiest way is to use the chat window or you can raise your hand and then we can 
um, let you ask your questions or you can do it during the talk and you can also do it afterwards. So whatever, whatever fits better for you. So, okay, let's start. And first I want to show you one of the things I use a lot in um, my uh, seminars and our events. Uh, we use the breakout sessions and that's a possibility to bring such a group as we have now with 47 people into small groups of three or four or whatever you want. And what I now want from you is you are in a group of three or four. So please introduce yourself to the other ones, make it short, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, without, uh, whatever, and try to find at least one thing that you all have in common. So that's the challenge. I, I write it in the chat again, so you will have it when you are now going into breakout sessions. So see you back in six minutes and um, I hope you find something which you have in common and don't forget to introduce yourself to the others. You see, the most important thing is to have a good PC or Mac or laptop, but um, something which is really state of the art, it's, we have to have a lot of memory, you have to have a fast um, hard disk drive and you have, of course, to have a fast internet connection. And normally don't rely on Wi-Fi. Um, use your cable wired connection, which is much faster, much better, and more stable for the internet connection. So that's obvious. If you have to to make, or if you want to make a good online event, an online seminar, then you have to have a good connection, of course. So the next thing is you need to have a camera. So um, I would recommend to have something with full HD. So um, maybe something like that, what you see here, or I have an Opspot mini camera. Um, so it's it's good to have a good um, picture, a good um, you, that you are in a good shape in in the event, and nothing is worse than than the almost black screen with some fading things. So please um, have in mind that that the people recognize you uh, through the camera, and so you have to have a good um, image, good picture uh, on screen. So that's the next thing, and of course the other thing is audio. So try to have a good microphone. So there are quite good microphones on the market. I use that one, which you see here, it's, a, it's from Blue. Um, they are also used for podcasts and things like that. And so you have a, a good audio quality and that's uh, also another key thing for the online events. And then if you want to make it professional, um, it's a good way to also have a green screen, um, which is the possibility as you see it now, um, I can totally um, have the things behind me out of the the window out of my my, my uh, picture and that's possible through a green screen you can buy them quite cheap on, on um, ebay or or in shops or whatever and of course you need lots of light so that you are in a good good um good um, shape and that you are good you are seen very well so and the other thing is the software thing and of course the first thing you need is something which we are using now so at the moment we have zoom but there's not only Zoom on the market, of course, there's also Microsoft Teams or, um, or um, Google Meet or BlueJeans or GoToWebinar or WebEx or other ones. And they all have their advantages and disadvantages. For me, Zoom is by far the best um, because normally it's totally stable. You have a, a good connection. You, have, um, you can have up to 49 people on one screen. So that's very helpful if you have a big group. You have these breakout sessions, which work very well. You have a poll systems and other things which are really nice. And so that's the reason why we chose that. Also in terms of the whole data protection thing, um, Zoom can be totally anonymous. So you can give any name you want and you can mute your camera. And so you can really be anonymous. That's the, a big advantage, for example, if you compare that with Microsoft Teams, where everybody always has all the other's email addresses, for example. So that's also something for me. But um, you have to decide whatever you want to use, but you have to be an expert with it to have a good online event. The next thing is you need something just for the presentation. Um, I normally use PowerPoint, as you see at the moment. It's a little bit like a renaissance. So because PowerPoint was very popular in the 90s and maybe in the beginning of the millennium, but then it were more or less out of the, not, not, not state of the art anymore. And now it comes back with all these online meetings because it's a nice way to produce something like a canvas where you can paint all your things on it. But there are also other programs which you can use. So I'm not advertising Microsoft. It's just the thing I use. Um, there are other, other programs on the market. 
And what I also use, I use lots of pictures and videos and sometimes audio files in my presentations or in our seminars. So I have the Adobe things like Premiere and Photoshop and Audition and these things, but there are also other programs on the market. But have in mind that it's important if you want to show pictures, if you want to show some short video clips and something like that, you have to be able to edit them and to make them in the way you want to have it. And last but not least, also, there are some special tools on the market. Um, I use a lot the Mentimeter thing. We will know that, uh, get to know that later on. Um, there you can easily also make polls and, and word clouds and quizzes and things like that with a large online group. It's an, an easy way to do that. So um, now I have a question. We talked about the hardware and the software and just right in the chat window, what you think what we else need for a good online event. Any ideas, please write in the chat. And also please raise your hand or write if you have some questions. Ah, Sachti Kaiser asks after you, after the slides, of course you can have them afterwards. So clear, concise instructions, very, very important. Beer, gallon, cheers. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, you have the moderation, you have the people in front, you have clear glasses, perfect. Oh yes, now, now they're coming all the other things. <laughs> Brett, I really like your sense of humor. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, so, but what David said is very important to have all these things around, a good booking system. I skipped that today, but I think you, you know that um, you need to have a partner for the beer, for, the, for all the logistics to send people to beer to the people, um, something for the booking. And um, just have a look at the chat again. clear and obvious purpose, yes. So that's all the thing. And um, what's mostly um, now on, on, um, written in the chat is the thing of moderation. And that's what we are going on now. And I think the, the most important thing, it's the difference between the online and the offline thing. So if you have an, an offline event, you can walk through the people. If someone is distracted, you can just go there and, and talk or, or just stand next to him or her and then you have the attention again. So that's quite easy. Um, you can maybe shout or whatever you can do, you, it's easier. But if you are in an online event, it's very easy for the people to maybe look for the emails or go into the kitchen or whatever. And so it's very, very important to always tell them what they have to do, how they have to do it, when they have to do it, and, and also what you are doing, and also to give them um, a clear message how long they have to do it. So remember, as we tried it with the breakout sessions, I said it's lasting um, six minutes. And so it's, it's opening and it's closing after six minutes. You have a clear message what to do. So introduce yourself, find something you have in common. And also um, uh, this is an example. So please always, if, if you want to get the attraction of the people, you have to, to always um, be clear and, and have a good message and, and have them always on track. So. The next thing is um, also if you, if you say we make an online event also that the people learn something. You have to have in mind learning means if you only hear something, you maybe remember 20%. So that's, that's a lot, but not very much. <laughs> so, and the, the other thing is if you only see something, so like watching TV, you have maybe 30%. So the easiest thing is to combine both that's what we are doing at the moment. So we are seeing and hearing. And so maybe you remember 50% tomorrow of what, what I'm talking at the moment. Um, but if you want to maximize that, then you also have to bring the people into talking about it. And then you get 70%. And if you also get them working on it, so interaction, maybe in small groups or also individual or whatever, then you go up to 90%. So that's a very important thing why you really should try to give the people more than only hearing and, and watching. So that's really important. Um, also what Adrian now says in the, in the chat, he says also watch on the breaks. So that's also important. You cannot do a seminar four hours in a row. 
So my experience is one and a half hours is the maximum. And afterwards you need a, a break at least 15 minutes. And also tell the people not to sit in the break and talk uh, and wait until it's over. They have to stand up, they have to have fresh air, maybe drink something, go to the toilet, whatever. So really um, have them also in a motion that they come back to the seat and are fresh again. Yeah, and the next thing is the good old kiss rule. So keep it short and simple. Don't make too many um, slides, too many words. Um, try to be uh, on spot and also speak in clear and short sentences. Speak slowly, make breaks. It's also important um, to have the audition with you. Yeah, another thing is that here, <laughs> um, I just tried to give you two very bad slides. <laughs> um, so if you have such an amount of, of, of words on a slide, nobody would read that. So that's that simply doesn't make any sense. So don't mix a PowerPoint which you want to have printed and, and be read later on with a PowerPoint which you will be using for a seminar or for an online event. So normally you have one picture or two pictures or one video or maybe three bullet points with a word or two. That's the maximum which should be on your slides normally. So really don't forget about that. Yeah. So um, let's make a short uh, try of the Mentimeter thing. So the question is, what do you take away from today so far? And now we try to go to your mobile, use your mobile phone and go into the browser of your mobile phone and there enter menti.com and then use the code 3069 I also will put it in the chat <clears throat> and then enter what you took away from today so far. Hi Marcus, I'm on my mobile phone, so I'm unable to do that. Sorry? I am on my mobile phone. Oh, then I don't know if you are, if you have the possibility to switch the window to your browser, then you could do it. If if not, um, then you have just have to skip that one. But I will show you the results anyway. Okay, then good. I will show you the results now. I should add my wife's on the laptop in another room. <laughs> <laughs> So, and here you see what's, what's <laughs> happening. So now you can see what's happening. So all the things we just talked about. And so tools is a very important thing. I'm totally with you. Oh, just a second. So the, they are seeing now what Mentimeter is doing. So this is just one of the possibilities this tool has. Um, so you can really make nice, um, nice visualizations of things. They also have quizzes and they also have um, something like a scrolling thing where you can more, for example, enter you something about you and you can also learn all the people in this way. So this so. is something that you've embedded in this particular page, is it? Um, yeah, and I opened that in uh, Mentimeter. So this is the, there's Mentimeter, which is the home of the thing. And, and Mentimeter, you're now sharing Mentimeter. I, 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 yeah, shared, okay. I shared Mentimeter at the moment. Oh, gotcha. Okay, thanks. Yes, yeah. Okay, so I will send you the, the nice picture afterwards and I'll go back to the presentation, but I'm almost done with the part um, before we go to the questions. So for me, as a first conclusion, um, the very most important thing is to be aware that online is not offline, to see what it's the, the, the 
advantages, for example, is you can always have some guests from all over the world in your meeting, which is not possible in an, in an offline event. But you also have to take care about um, the people not getting distracted. You have to um, also see what's what's possible and what not. For example, we make in our beer sommelier trainings, which are now also online, we make um, um, dry hopping, for example. So we send them beer, we send them hops, and then we, we have an online session where people have the beer along and the hops and, and do the dry hopping and um, try it, of course. And then we make breakout sessions where they can talk about their experiences and so on. And we, we even do an, an brewing this way where they get mold also. And of course they have the hops and, and, have, and we tell them what, what they have to, to have in their kitchen. And then they brew along in the online course. So that's also possible if you make it in a, in a clear way. So that's very important to see online is not offline. Also to have many variations, not too long on, on one method, too long on one thing, um, maybe five minutes and then another thing um, to, to bring the, the attraction of the people. And then also the another thing is innovation. So there are more and more online tools every day. There's something new, and so just see what is interesting for you, what fits you and your ideas, and then embed these tools into your work. So for example, we also have a digital whiteboard. It's called Mural, and that's also very handy. You can have post-its on it and and make um, many many things with that. And the other thing is, of course be the chef of your heart and software, um, the master of your heart and software, understand what's, what's the special thing of online and find your own personal way. So that's also another, of course, important thing. Also the same in the offline tasting, of course, there is really no, no big difference in that. So um, of course you can ask me, I, I, did, I did do it very shortly today so that we have time for questions and also time for Anita. And but we can talk about all the other things afterwards, or you can write me an email or contact me wherever you like. Okay, now we go back to the main window and I look at the chat. Um, I just look in the chat about questions. Um, yeah, Tim, great. Tim talked about the, the very special thing that people from three continents could talk together. So that's a, a very special opportunity which these online tools bring. So um, maybe we make a first question out if anyone has a question on that. Or we can also go to Anita and talk about the online competition. And um, yes, I don't see raised hands and I don't see new things in the chat. So Anita, please take over and let us Introduce us a little bit in the in the world of online competitions. You more or less invented the way for the World Beer Awards, and um, yes, you are the awards director. Maybe you also say some more words on yourself about yourself, and and then I'm very happy to see you, uh, to hear you now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much for that, Marcus, and for having me along. Um... My name is Anita Izasi and I'm the awards director for the Global World Drinks Awards. And looking at the screen, um, I see quite a few familiar faces. I see Chris there, which prompted me to have to reply to an email, even though he's in Chile. Um, I see Diego there as well. So it's lovely to see all Paul is there. Um, I think I've seen Steve somewhere. So thanks so much for having me and lovely to see and meet you all. Now, the World Beer Awards have been going for about 14 years now, and it's not the only competition uh, we do here. Um, the global company is called Paragraph. We also run the World Whiskies Awards, the World Gin Awards, which some of you may be familiar with. And over the past few years, we've developed the beer tastings, which we've always, proudly done in person with great tastings in London. We have established together with Marcus uh, the tastings in Germany. We have a session in Canada, in the USA, Japan. We've taken on Brazil and Chris um, a few years back has also started the same in Chile. 
And this was all going really well. And a year ago, we thought, this is great. We're looking forward to a wonderful, all planned out year. And then it happened. <laughs> so pretty much literally a year ago, we had to make a decision on what to do. Uh, a lot of competitions we've seen getting canceled. And we had to find a way to say either, we're gonna stop it this year, but then again, people said, no, we still want to enter. So we said, no, we're going to bite the bullet. Um, although nobody really knew what was going to happen, what shipping would be like um, for entries coming in, what entry levels would be, or indeed if anybody could meet in person. <laughs> so none of that was clear, but we said, you know, whatever happens, um, we will push on, we're going to make this happen. I'm pretty sure I also said at some stage around the same time, I will not be sending out beer to tasters. So that changed. The advantage we had at the World Beer Awards um, was a great one in the perspective that a lot of our other spirit awards already happen in the way of home tastings to reach as many of our tasters as we can globally. So our gin awards, our whiskeys awards, those samples have always in the past been shipped out to our tasters. And the challenge last year really was, how do we do the same thing for beer? Because obviously beer, you cannot put into a small sample bottle, um, 50 milliliters and send it out to tasters. That's just not gonna happen. So together with all the partners in the other countries, we had really to make a cut and say, right, how we're gonna best do this. And the solution was very simple, although fairly time consuming, is to really take each individual sample that was supplied, coordinate all the tasters globally in tasting sessions with everybody staying at home and not meeting in person and literally create black wrapped bottles. That means every sample that was handed in was assigned to a taster and black wrapped. And I mean that every single bottle, every single tin was black wrapped, uh, labeled with an ID stamp and then put into parcels which went all over the globe. We had all across Europe tasters. Um, our Canadian team has done the same. So has the Brazilian team. Uh, so did the Japanese. And the great thing about that, apart from the wrapping, really was we could reach even more than before our tasters. Whereas in the past, we had to rely on people traveling. And at the best of times, that takes up a day or two of somebody's time, maybe three if they're coming from further abroad. Now, the great way we've done it this year is we've reduced the number per session to about 25 to 30 samples, which is about four hours of tasting. And that way though we had, I can't even remember how many online Zoom sessions, we really could make sure that we offer different timings for different people they could pick their own little online slot and Zoom, as Marcus has pointed out earlier, and you've all experienced with those little breakout sessions, we really could have up to 10, 12 judging groups in one session. And that made that a very interesting experience. So each person literally would join us Zoom session just as we've done today. We would all go into our own little Zoom groups and you would meet three or four people who you may or may not have met before and you all have your own, that's a good question. <laughs> and you'd all have your own samples in front of you and judge the same samples. There were, to be quite honest, not a lot of broken samples. I think we had one damaged shipment and one is still somewhere. But all in all, um, it's been fairly good. Um, lots of wrapping, I'm not going to deny that, lots of packing, but um, we've up to now worked with DHL Express, so there is a good amount of, of tracking and also communication there rather than 
other courier service um, or the normal mail. So we've got a great logistical support from them as well. Um, yeah, the feedback from our judges, and some of them are here, so I'm going to put words into your mouth, um, is it's been an interesting experience. In terms of the results, it's been just the same as if we would have done it in person. Sometimes we uh, almost thought it was better for the sheer purpose. Everybody could relax at home, make their own space without the distractions of having another hundred people in the room and just getting a set of flighted beers in front of you, you could be comfortable at home. Um, it's also been quite nice because people were, as you've experienced, forced to talk to other people that you have not met before, that even in an in-person tasting, you might have not taken the time to speak to because you would almost all the time, you know, you'd go to the friends that you haven't seen, you know, for a long time, rather than sort of talk to strangers. So it's been a very interesting experience. Um, and obviously the question comes up, what we're going to do. Yes, exactly. What we're going to do this year, because the one thing that was missed is, is the personal interaction, whereas the results and the tasting was great. It is the getting together in person and having that catch up, that beer afterwards that you can actually really enjoy uh, with other people. And the answer is we are not quite sure because whereas shipping last year was great this year, with us being based in the UK, it feels a bit, you know, away from everybody else. Uh, shipping currently is an absolute nightmare to get anything out of the country. So I think this year will be a bit of a, a mix if we're allowed to do so, maybe in smaller forms, maybe in more localized country tastings and to a degree still continuing with shipping samples, at least within the UK. So we'll have to see about that. Yes, I've seen the, the note about the, the bottle caps. So we did have, this is me being really prepared. Um, we actually had stickers, so they all went um, with little stickers like that. So everything that could really give it away what the product is um, was wrapped up. And Marcus and the ones that got them were very, um, uh, can attest to that, that there was really not um, a great chance of recognizing the bottles now. Um, I've seen the question here about the distinctiveness, the recognizable bottles. Um, because it is a very international competition, we did have, I think, just over two and a half thousand samples globally once we counted them. Uh, to get the chance that there's really one that is so outstanding that everybody would instantly recognize it, um, the chance of that is very slim. Most of them are your standard bottles, your standard cans. Uh, so to really get the bottle and saying, I know exactly what that is. And the only one that actually comes to mind right away that everybody would recognize is the Samuel Adams. Um, so that wasn't done. But other than that, because of the sheer quantity of samples there, um, that was, um, as far as we're concerned, not an option. And I don't think we had something that was really that outstanding. Uh, Steve, even that bottle, I get the, the point about the St. Peter's, uh, not that they entered last year, but again, a lot of people, and we are talking about international tasters, though somebody in Norfolk or Suffolk would be very familiar with it, to then expect somebody maybe in Ireland to recognize that bottle, or maybe somebody in Spain, that would weigh itself out. And we do appreciate that our tasters that we select are professionally enough that even if there was a chance to say, I know exactly what that bottle is, to still evaluate it and not share it during the conversations. Um, tasters were also asked after they scored each beer individually, 
to give their score immediately to their table captain. And once the tasting was finished, everybody was made to actually show their wrapped bottles at the end of the call to make sure nobody took the label off beforehand. And again, it's really due to the professionalism of all our tasters, table captains, to really bring this across. And uh, we really appreciate all the hard and uh, a good work they've all done. Yes, swing tops as well. But again, there are so many different forms of swing tops. And if you start guessing, then you might be guessing wrong. But again, it goes back to we do have good judges and everything was done very professionally. Everything was recorded. So we did take a peek here or there as well. And I think we've, we've done the best we could in a very strange situation. Any questions from anybody? No. You can also raise your hand and talk if you want. You don't have to use the chat. Uh, yes. Anita, may I ask you a question? Yes. Yes, you may. Who are you? It's Chris. <laughs> oh, sorry. It, it doesn't pop up. <laughs> I actually don't say, oh, yeah, there you go, Chris. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, well, I, I had the spotlight. Now it's going. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay thanks. Um, just to, uh, to since we didn't participate last year, if it's going to be all online again this year, um, how we how do we proceed? Do we judge uh, locally online, of course, with the local beers, and then send them over, and then you have them judged only in England by local judges there, or do you send them around the world again? Um. So this year we're going to have a country by country approach, mm -hmm. um, which I'm going to drop you a note later on once we get around to that. Um, if a country is, we're talking about judgings in June and July. Mm -hmm. If um, a country is in a position to do smaller tastings in person, of course, that's fine as long as it's uh, safe to do so. If it's not safe to do so and restrictions are still in place, then we would have to go back to at home Zoom tastings. So we really have to evaluate that situation much closer to the time itself. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Tim had a very interesting question about the cost of posting beer, which was more or less than um, transporting and putting up to the judges. <sighs> Um, I think by the time we finished everything, um, it actually slight, it didn't work out much less expensive, to be fair. Uh, maybe a little, but yes, you've got your venue, you don't have your venue, you don't have the staff there. But then again, um, we had to hire staff in um, to get everything wrapped. I didn't do that all myself because that was horrendous. Um, so there's staffing costs there. There is obviously all the materials that are used for the wrapping, for the packaging. The packaging itself is fairly expensive. And again, we work with DHL Express and though we have preferred rates, it's still um, quite a bit of money that's being invested there. So slightly less in terms of, of costs, but not by much to be fair. But yeah, we definitely do miss the, yeah, the in-person tasting. I also have to point out, it wasn't just the beers we sent out, each taster got a little online pack. So we did provide glasses, um, books, materials, writing, and all of that. And a bottle opener, just in case. But I would expect anybody not to have one. <laughs> so we did also um, send our judges a little something uh, to keep them going and to make the experience more of an experience. I do believe there were t-shirts involved. So, yes. So it wasn't just that. Uh, you know, there wasn't a, a US tasting last year at all. That's very true. Um, for the sheer fact that within the US, um, 
A, because it's such a big country and you all have um, very, very different regulations from state to state. So the decision for the USA, we don't have a dedicated team for beer in the USA. It's usually us going over and doing the operations. So the decision was made just to move the products to here, to the UK and get it done by, by the tasters uh, within Europe for that. Canada, we do have the advantage. We have a very dedicated team there and they get that all arranged within Toronto. It's just the USA was just, is just way too big. And the, the regulations oh. are very bad. No problems with sending beers with no labels. Um, I don't know what you mean, Simone, but- um, In terms of customs. Right, so the good thing was, <laughs> up to last year, customs wasn't an issue within Europe. So that wasn't a problem. We had a few outside uh, Europe uh, where normally just a customs declaration is needed. So that wasn't an issue either. Canada obviously didn't have a problem with that. So all the other countries where we had localized judgings, even though they sent them out, there wasn't that issue either. Now this is gonna be a problem this year. That is gonna be the biggest challenge. But yeah, up to last year, that was no problem whatsoever. There's another question about cask ale, but we don't have that at the World Beer Awards, I think. But that's hard to do. <laughs> um, yeah, I think if there would have been casks, uh, we would have struggled. Uh, so everybody was instructed, though we do normally accept growlers, we don't accept casks, uh, but we do accept growlers. Um, but that was taken away last year just because of, of no way of getting that judged properly. But yeah, Tom Carroll, if you want to also drop me a line, we do very much hope if we're allowed back into the USA this year, they didn't allow us in last year. Um, if we're allowed back, we do definitely want to bring the US tasting back this year. But again, okay. it depends on who can go where. And I think with all of that, we just still have to say. Um, the best way to join is always drop us an email. Um, I don't know, Marcus, if you distribute the, the contact details later on, you can either drop Marcus a line. Um, our email is very simple. It's info at worldbeerawards.com. Actually, I'm going to pop it into the chat. So if anybody has any questions or even later on, then please do get in touch. If you want to apply for the judging team, absolutely. Um, I'm always going to say it's not my decision. Um, I will check with the relevant chair of judges. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, Paul, who stopped sending beer boxes to the US as it hits him. Is, yeah. Um, we have, we've, we don't send anything into the USA because of, of customs and that's, it's not even customs, it's the individual state regulations that are just such a nightmare. We can get it out very easily. We've got contacts there. It's just getting anything in. It's just, it's just such a hassle. And yeah, and Europe is going to be um, a, a challenge altogether. I'm not going to say that Germany is the worst case for customs backlog, but <laughs> the DHL man wasn't very complimentary the other day. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I believe that um, California does not allow uh, beers to be shipped in the state. It's one of the handful, one of the many that don't. But um, when um, people are submitting for um, homebrew competitions and all, they usually um, label them as yeast samples or bottle, you know, you just kind of get around it because they post, you know, it's the only wholesalers are allowed to actually receive them. Yeah. If, if it's labeled alcohol, but if you bend the rules a bit yeah you might be able to get through but you might you might also not you know and and that's oh, the biggest hidden, challenge that's what you said. yeah i mean our receiving facility at the moment is in virginia um and they're, they're legal to receive products in mm -hmm. um which is normally fine but again i know everybody then has to have a certain license to even 
get it across state lines and all of that. It's 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 a challenge it's we like have to overcome. But you know, this is going to be the same as Europe, so we'll learn. <laughs> Yeah. It's just one of those things, you know, if it's not one thing, it's another. Uh, and it's uh, one question. Um, have you seen some um, thing from the breweries when they send beer or, or put in beer to a beer competition uh, when they know it's an online event instead of uh, a judging event on, uh, on national level? Do you see any? Because some of the beer tastings uh, last year was, uh, you know, suddenly they found out they have to do it online. But now the last half year, the people who actually bought, sent beer to a beer competition, they know it is an online competition. So they have to send the beer around. Do no, we have any experience with the breweries who said, okay, it's online, I'm not participating. Uh, no, we've not had that feedback, to be fair. I mean, last year, the, the big question was, um, oh, I've submitted for another competition. They've just canceled. What are you going to do? And we've been quite open to saying, this is the plan. This is what we're going to do. And people were quite happy. And we were quite open of what the plan was once it was set in motion. So we've not s seen anybody that said, I'm not going to enter. Because at the end of the day, whether that's online or offline, it's still the same level of judging. You know, it's it's not, you know, we'll make sure that each beer is evaluated properly. That That's what we're promising our entrance. Um, so whether that's online or offline um, is almost secondary. And people have been, especially last year, very appreciated of the fact that we did continue and the awards now have been open for about two months and we do see uh, um, a great number of return entrants as well. So again, the question of, oh, I'm not going to participate because you've changed the way you're running the tastings, um, that's not something come up. People do ask if um, we do bring the final tasting, which we've always made of a great event about, if we bring it back. But um, again, we'll just have to wait and see. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So no, that's that's not been an issue whatsoever, to be fair. So we've not had any feedback on that. And again, this, the standard of judging as all the judges in even in this call can affirm to you is the same as in person, almost better. And, and presumably the, the cost to the breweries was the same because they were just shipping to you, but that will change this they, year yeah. to ship somewhere else. Yeah, there's no additional cost to the breweries. So it's the same entry fee. Um, and all they had to go and is get their beer in. And there wasn't, um, at the same time, there wasn't any take back in terms of what people would be receiving either. So we left everything the same way. All we did is instead of bringing our judges together, we left the judges where they were and got the beer to the judges. That's all we did in a roundabout way. But in a very good way. <laughs> so that was really that was also what what the judges said. Um, also in, in every group I was, the result was that they all said it was very well organized and it was a really great experience. And besides not meeting in person, it was a fantastic experience. And so that that was really a surprise because you didn't really know uh, what would be the outcome. So mm -hmm. that was quite good. <laughs> okay. So if there are no more questions, I would. Um, give back to Brett and also say thanks to you, Anita. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your patience and for all the information. <laughs> no, thank you, Marcus. Thanks for having me. Thanks, uh, Anita. And thank you, Marcus, for a superb uh, evening. Um, so I just want to conclude. I've already thanked the, uh, the speakers and I hope you've all found that really useful. Um, a couple of uh, promotions and a bit of administration from myself. In the chat window, there's details of our next EBCU workshop, which is on Thursday, May the 20th. I promise that we will sort out the links so there won't be another uh, 
a problem with technology, hopefully. I shouldn't say that because I know what will happen. But in theory, everything should be OK. Um, the, the workshop is the beer world after the pandemic. And uh, that should be uh, that should be a, a fascinating talk. There will be links on the EBC website. It's not there yet. So there'll be links and details. So we would encourage you to um, to come along. And the final thing is, if you could complete the evaluation, there's a link on the chat window as well. It would be really helpful for the, the organizing group um, for, for, for us to prepare other events. If you as an individual or organization have ideas for a workshop, possibly somebody you'd recommend or possibly you'd like to present a workshop yourself that would be interest to EBCU, Please, there's a form on the events website, on the EBC website. Please complete the form and uh, we will contact you for more information. But in conclusion, I'd just like to say cheers to everyone. Cheers to Anita, cheers to Marcus and cheers to you all. Have a lovely evening and uh, thank you.